Welcome to the U.S. Open Tennis Championships. The greatest tournament in the world. To succeed at this high level of competitive tennis, proper conditioning is a must. Conditioning gives your serve the power to send aces past your opponent. It gives you the stamina to play in top form throughout your matches. Plus, it gives you the muscular endurance to get to the ball repeatedly through long rallies. Planning and following the right conditioning program will help you play your competitive best. Technique and stroke mechanics are just part of what it takes to be a competitive tennis player. A conditioning program that takes into account the physical demands of tennis will pull everything together and help you play like a pro. In this video, we'll show you how to design a conditioning program that will put you in top physical shape. We'll show you how to build your fitness base, peak for competition, and recover without losing a step. Before starting your conditioning program, you'll want to test various facets of your physical fitness. Fitness testing can help players and coaches pinpoint strengths and weaknesses, design or refine a training program, and monitor progress. From the test results, you can determine which areas you need to improve to perform better and prevent injuries. The USTA has designed a fitness testing program that examines the key components of physical fitness. Strength to help you send the ball past your opponent at high speed. Muscular endurance, allowing you to repeatedly hit the ball with force. Power, to help you develop racket head speed and an explosive first step. Agility, to help you change directions and stay balanced. Speed, which helps you get to the ball in time to execute excellent stroke technique. Flexibility, giving you the range of motion to execute strokes with the most efficient form. Aerobic capacity, for the stamina to be energetic and alert the entire match. And body composition, a measurement that reflects your overall fitness. In particular, fitness testing helps players and coaches plan a conditioning program and set goals. Plus, players can be retested periodically to evaluate their conditioning program. By comparing preseason with midseason test results, players and coaches can make modifications for further improvements in weaker areas. With your test results, you can plan your conditioning program like the pros. We suggest a four-phase conditioning program. The first phase, the preparation phase, helps build your fitness base. The second phase, the pre-competition phase, works on speed, agility, power, and strength. The third phase, the competition phase, focuses on fine-tuning your play and peaking for competition. And finally, the fourth phase, the active rest phase, is dedicated to recovery and maintenance. Before we get into the details of the four-phase conditioning program, you need to understand the essentials of the tennis workout. Every workout will include an active warm-up, stretching, tennis practice, a conditioning session, and a cool down. Before stretching, start every workout with a three to five minute active warm-up. This involves light, low intensity exercise, such as slow jogging or stationary cycling. It warms your core temperature and gets your body ready to stretch and exercise. After the warm-up, perform static stretching exercises. 
Static stretching involves holding a position that lengthens a muscle group and its associated connective tissue. The next part of your workout will include on-court skills and play. This might include drills, simulated point play, or technique sharpening exercises. After the tennis practice session, you'll do some aerobic, muscular endurance, strength, power, or agility conditioning. This might include jogging, strength training, sprints, or drills. After the conditioning portion of your workout, your muscles are completely warmed up. This is a great time to work on increasing your flexibility and cooling down. These are the essentials of any good tennis workout. Warm up and stretching, tennis practice, conditioning, flexibility and cool down. Professional tennis players have year-round conditioning programs so they compete for major tournaments. Players who have seasons, like high school and collegiate players, can use this same conditioning program by modifying it. I'll tell you how as we discuss the four-phase program. Players are required to make between 300 to 500 bursts of energy over the course of a match. Aerobic stamina and muscular endurance are often the difference between winning or losing the last set. To play your best, you need to build a strong base of both aerobic and anaerobic conditioning. Aerobic exercise is continuous long duration activities like jogging, biking, and stair climbing. These activities give you a base of conditioning that allows you to recover more quickly between points. Anaerobic exercise is short duration, high intensity movements, like sprinting to the net or lunging for a wide shot. Tennis is mainly an anaerobic sport involving speed, power, strength, and agility. However, matches can last a long time, so having an aerobic base will help you have the stamina to make it through the match. Thus, it's important to prepare for competition by building both aerobic and anaerobic bases. In the preparation phase, we recommend low intensity, high volume aerobic exercise. This means you should exercise aerobically at 60 to 75 percent of your maximal heart rate at least three times a week for 20 to 30 minutes. Your anaerobic training in the preparation phase will focus on muscular endurance with strength training. Again, you'll do low intensity, high volume work. Do many repetitions. We suggest two to three sets of 10 to 15 repetitions at a low resistance. Although the tennis stroke involves the entire body, it's particularly important to increase muscular endurance in the shoulder and trunk. First, let's look at a variety of exercises beginning with the larger muscles of the shoulder and upper back and finishing with the smaller ones. Select two or three of these exercises for each workout session. Exercises that work the larger muscles of the shoulder and upper back include the seated row, the bent over row, the lat pull down, the prone fly, and the upright row. Exercises that work the smaller muscles of the shoulder include external rotation while lying on your side, the side raise, shoulder extension, external rotation while kneeling, external rotation while standing, and scaption. Exercises that work the muscles of the trunk include the crunch, the crossover crunch, the superman,
hyperextension, reverse hyperextension, hip raise, and hip rotation. These exercises will improve your ability to hit the ball forcefully throughout your matches. More importantly, they'll help prevent injuries that often occur due to the repetitive stresses of tennis. The preparation phase is the foundation of your tennis conditioning. Remember, the focus of the preparation phase is low intensity and high volume of work. Work on your aerobic conditioning with 20 to 30 minute aerobic workouts at 60 to 75 percent of your maximum heart rate three to four times a week. You'll establish your muscular endurance base with high repetitions, two to three sets of 10 to 15 reps and low resistance strength training. For the competitive tennis player who plays year round, the preparation phase can last from eight to 10 weeks. Seasonal players may have a shorter preparation phase. They are often encouraged to get in shape before the official season begins. Off-season training can be very helpful for the player if official preseason training time is abbreviated. A couple of weeks before your first match, you'll change your conditioning program. You'll enter the pre-competition phase. Competitive tennis requires quick bursts of speed to cover the court. In advanced level tennis, the average point lasts less than 10 seconds. The average rest is 18 to 20 seconds between points. And players rarely run more than four to five steps in one direction during a point. In the pre-competition phase, concentrate your conditioning. Now it's time to work speed, agility, strength and power. You'll turn up the intensity and make your workout more tennis specific. After building your aerobic and anaerobic base, the pre-competition phase steps up your anaerobic conditioning. Focusing on speed, agility, strength and power helps you improve the fitness components essential to competitive tennis play. During the conditioning part of your workout, you'll do high-intensity speed and agility drills, strength training, and power exercises. We use tennis-specific movement drills that are fun and creative. The drills closely mimic typical tennis movements, so players who love tennis enjoy the encore drills. The following drill uses ground strokes and really prepares you for a game situation. The purpose of the forehand only drill is to improve lateral movement along the baseline. The receiver stands in the ready position at the center of the baseline. Another player or coach stands on the other side of the net with a basket of balls. The feeder hits balls to either side of the receiver. The receiver can only hit forehands, so she has to run along the baseline to get into position to hit the ball. The forehand only drill is great for working on inside out and inside in forehands. Another ground stroke drill is called turn, turn, turn. This drill reinforces rotation of your body necessary for early preparation for ground strokes. The receiver stands on the baseline in one of the alleys. A cone is set up cross court as a target. A feeder drops four to six balls, one at a time, while backing up slowly toward the net. The receiver alternates hitting forehands and backhands, aiming at the target. Quick footwork is the key in this drill. Concentrate on rotating fully in preparation for the next shot. The work-rest ratio in a tennis match is one unit of work to three units of rest. To mimic match play, you'll want to structure some of your drills with the one to three work rest ratio in mind. The next drill also uses the one to three work rest ratio and helps train you to close in at the net. The drill close and drop works on both forward and backward movement and reinforces closing in while at the net. You can vary the duration of the drill to 30 seconds work and 90 seconds rest to be similar to an actual tennis point. 
In the close and drop drill, both the player and feeder are on the same side of the net. The feeder kneels at the net on the service line facing the other player. The receiver waits near the service boxes with racket in hand. Two cones are set up on the other side of the net as targets. The feeder alternates tossing balls to the left and right side, forcing the receiver to sprint up and hit a drop shot at one of the cones. After each shot, the receiver backpedals as quickly as possible to the starting position. Perform the drill for 30 seconds and rest for 90 seconds. There are many drills from which to choose, and you can make up your own. One way to make them more fun is to add competition. Players can compete against each other or against themselves by keeping track of past scores. This next drill is good for developing speed, agility, and change of direction in a competitive format. The object of mini tennis is to play a game in the service boxes using backspin shots only. The server begins the game by serving from the deuce court with a backspin shot. The game proceeds as normal, except all shots must bounce in the service box, and all returns must be made using backspin. In the pre-competition phase, strength training combined with plyometric exercises can improve your strength and power. Your strength training workouts will differ from the preparation phase where you did many repetitions at a low resistance. Now you'll do two to three sets of eight to 10 repetitions three times per week with increased resistance. We use a variety of plyometric exercises like the alley hops to help build explosive power. Plyometric exercise employs an eccentric or lengthening muscular action followed by an explosive concentric or shortening action. The lengthening action stretches the muscle and tissues surrounding the muscle, enabling the shortening action to be more forceful. Alley hops are an example of plyometric exercise for tennis. They help build power in the legs for charging the net and exploding through an overhead. One player stands with one foot on the outside of the doubles alley and jumps to the other side of the alley. The player immediately changes direction and repeats the jump and direction change sequence to the net. Rest period for this exercise, as with many tennis exercises, is based on the one to three work rest ratio, so the five second work will be followed by a 15 second rest. Another good tennis specific plyometric exercise is medicine ball mini tennis. Players stand on both sides of the net and throw a medicine ball over the net to their opponent. The other player catches the ball on the bounce and using a forehand or backhand motion returns the ball over the net. This drill is excellent for building power in the legs, trunk and upper body and can be performed in a competitive format. In the pre-competition phase, you're working on speed, agility, and power with drills. You're increasing muscular strength with a strength training workout of two to three sets of eight to 10 repetitions, three times a week with increased resistance. Remember, in the pre-competition phase, you're doing high intensity and low volume workouts. Maintain your aerobic base with two 20 to 30 minute workouts per week. And don't forget your warm up and flexibility. The pre-competition phase can last three to four weeks for professionals and four to six weeks for seasonal players. It's finally here, the competition you've been working toward. You've set your aerobic and anaerobic base. You've worked on your speed, agility, strength and power. Your skills are honed. Now you need to sharpen your training to reach your peak. The competitive or peaking phase is the week right before your tournament. Focus on short duration and high intensity work, tapering your workouts. Players usually don't do any aerobic training or strength training during the competition phase. Instead, they focus on match play goals and high intensity short duration anaerobic drills. These drills would include tennis specific drills like the transition drill. This drill focuses on hitting a sequence of three shots, a forehand volley, a backhand volley, and an overhead. This is done as the player advances to the net to win the point. 
the receiver sprints forward to the center service line, split steps, and hits a forehand volley. Immediately after that, the receiver hits a backhand volley while closing in toward the net. The final shot in the sequence is an overhead while backing up. This is a great competition phase drill because it simulates match play and helps work on game strategy. Controlling the net really puts pressure on your opponent. A great drill to help you aggressively work the net is the high-low drill, which helps teach you how much reach you have at the net while you take only one step in either direction. The receiver stands ready at the net. A feeder feeds balls from the opposite side service line. The receiver alternates hitting a high forehand following a low backhand volley for a series of 10 shots. After a short rest, the receiver alternates from a high backhand to a low forehand. When doing this drill, focus on proper body rotation while hitting the volleys. Covering the net helps you dominate each point. A drill that helps you improve your movement at the net is called Protect Your Turf. The receiver stands in the center of one of the service boxes. A feeder stands on the opposite side of the center service line. The feeder rapidly feeds balls so that the receiver must move back and forth and side to side quickly to hit the balls. Use a split step when changing directions. This drill not only helps your racket skills at the net, but also your footwork. Remember, the focus of the competition phase is the competition. This is a time to reap the benefits of your conditioning program. Do only those activities that will help you with your matches. Then, have fun and play hard. After the competition, you need to recover from the physical and mental stress of high competition. The active rest phase consists of low intensity cross training to maintain conditioning. During the active rest phase, refine your conditioning plan based on your performance. This is a good time to reflect on your strengths and your weaknesses so you can improve your play for the next competition, whether it's next week or next month. Let's review the phases of competitive tennis conditioning. The preparation phase is when you establish your aerobic and muscular endurance base. You'll be doing low intensity, high volume workouts. This will be the off season for seasonal players. The pre-competition phase is when you really step up your intensity but reduce your volume of work. The main focus of this phase is increasing strength, power, speed and agility. The competition phase includes the week right before your competition as well as the competition itself. Your focus is clear. Play your best and look to win. Once the competition is over, you'll need to recover. The active rest phase begins right after your last match. You'll stay active but do low intensity low volume exercises. The most important aspect to remember when planning a conditioning program is to make it fun. Know the benefits, be enthusiastic, and be positive about all the improvements you make. This attitude will ensure that you stick to your conditioning program so you can reach your competitive peak.